Welcome back, everybody. You're going to want to give your full attention to our next story because it may help save your life. Jayla Gladden was taking a late night trip to the supermarket. As she exited the store and was opening her car door, the unthinkable happened. Here's Jayla in her own words. As I was leaving Kroger, there was a red box on my left side, and I guess that's where he was standing. He asked me for a lighter, and I told him no and kept walking to my car. I had my groceries in my hand. I went to go unlock my door and felt the knife in my abdomen. Um, I was in complete shock. I didn't know what to do. He made me climb over to my passenger side through my driver's side. I still had groceries in my hand at this time, and by the time I was able to sit down, he already was pointing the knife at me, telling me not to try any funny business. He took my keys and my phone. It was a long, silent drive for the most part. He pulled into a parking lot across from where a church was. He parked in the back corner and um, told me to take my clothes off. <sighs> Jayla Gladden survived her horrific ordeal and she is with us today to tell us how she managed to get away in her first live national television interview. Jayla, thank you so much for doing this. Thank you. I know this is still raw. It's just, this just happened in September. Yes, ma'am. Um, so let's just start before he got you into the car. I mean, you look at that tape, what time of day was that? Um, it was roughly between 10 and 11. At night? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Did you have any groceries when you came out of the store? Yes, ma'am. I had about three or four bags in my hand at the time. Was anybody around? No. I mean, but my car was parked right in front of the door, so I felt like I was okay. You saw him standing there. Did you get the spidey sense? You know, like danger, danger. Um, no, I really thought after he asked me for a lighter and I said no, that was just going to be the end of it, honestly. And as you walk to your car, look, we have surveillance. This is a surveillance video of the moment. It looks like daylight given the lighting, but it was 10 o'clock at night or so. Did you feel him coming after you as he was walking over? No, and surprisingly enough, I usually do feel things like that, but that night, no, ma'am. So he got you to, into the car and into the passenger seat by showing you a knife? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, was there any thought at that point of, you know, do, do I run, do I scream, do I, or was it I comply or I die? <sighs> I was in shock, and I felt I, I didn't know what I was feeling at the time. I just, I don't know if I wasn't thinking. I just, I didn't know what to do at all. So he gets you to a parking lot. And what happened? Um, he told me to take my clothes off and um, I tried to plead with him and he told me that there was no purpose of crying and that kind of stuck with me the whole way out. Um, there wasn't any purpose of crying. It wasn't going to benefit my situation at all. So I made it my duty to get out. And he, he raped you? Yes, ma'am. Did you described his eyes before the show as he, was, he looked dead inside. Like, was there anything there to connect to? Nothing at all, nothing. It was a blank, terrible, empty stare. Mm -hmm. And so after, after the rape was done, how did you get your cell phone? Because that becomes very important in this story. Um, he needed to go to, he wanted to rob a gas station, so I told him, I couldn't get him where he needed to be unless I had my phone. So it was kind of an ultimatum of figure out where you're going and you give me my phone or wander aimlessly. Mm -hmm. So you, she started to become her own advocate to try to gain his trust. I'll help you get to the next location. Let me help you, let me help you. Did you believe at that moment when you're negotiating with him about whether you'd be allowed to access your phone what did you believe his plans were for you? Um, well, I believed his plans were exactly what he told me was to take me to Michigan after he robbed whatever store that he was going to rob. 
and keep you? I mean, did you think that he, he wanted you to stay with him or that he was... Yeah, he told me we were going to make that 11-hour trip up to Michigan, the two of us. Mm -hmm. So you're, are you sitting in the passenger seat at this point? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And you take out your phone and she does something critical that I didn't even know a cell phone could do. Tell the audience what it was. I turned my location on and sent it to my boyfriend indefinitely so that he could see if I was moving or not. So how do you, like, when I look at my iPhone, I don't have it here, but there's a little I button in the top right of it. Is that what you hit? You hit the little I button. If mm -hmm. you do this on your iPhone, you'll see it if you go to send a text message. You hit, the little I pops up when you say, you know, text Doug, whatever. Um, and it says send location. And so you just clicked yes to that? Uh, I press share indefinitely so that they have an hour option, they have the end of the day option, and they have indefinitely. So that's what I chose. Mm -hmm. um, then you text with, texted with him, with your boyfriend, who is a, completely asleep, and you sent an urgent message. Um, that it's chilling. Look at this. You can read it for yourselves here. She, she texted to him, uh, kidnapped, kidnapped. See that? He writes, stop playing. And then he writes, I'm headed to the police station. And you say, in God, which meant what? I meant to say Owen, but it just really meant I was serious. Yeah. And he wrote, yes, ma'am, you're in Atlanta, baby. Oh, my God. Did, did, you, did you get the location? Did you give the location to anybody else? It goes on to, you, you tell him explicitly, here it is. Look, I'm scared. Knife. Don't call 911. Why don't call 911? I was scared that if he saw any blue lights, I would be held as a hostage. Mm -hmm. And you can feel, I mean, you say right there, I don't want him to kill me, which anybody would be fearful of in your circumstances. What happened after that, <laughs> you'll hear after the break when we have more with Jayla. My boyfriend, Tamir, is a very, very hard sleeper, and it's almost impossible to wake this man up. I was actually asleep for the night. Um, she texted me at two o'clock and I remember hearing a tone and I see that it's late and she sent me her location. And at that moment, I got, you know, very worried. I texted her, asked her, where was she at? What was she doing? And she just sent one word back, kidnap. And that's when like my whole body went cold we're back now with Jayla Gladden, who escaped, this is just three months ago, three and a half, from her alleged assailant after hours of being held hostage and raped. Jayla used her iPhone, her phone, to send her location to her boyfriend, Tamir Bryant, who joins us now as well. Tamir, thank you for being here. So you get that, you're a deep sleeper, Jayla says. How, what do you think it was that woke you up? Um, had to be God uh, and her text message tone. She actually has a different tone in my phone than anybody else, so I did, knew it was her. How did you know she was serious and not messing with you? She would never play like this. Um, to send me kidnapped was an e immediate cry for help, so I had to hop on it. So what did you do? You saw her saying, don't call 911. She was afraid that the, the lights and so on would lead him to, to kill her. So what, did, what were you thinking? What did you do? I knew since she didn't want me to call 911, you know, to merge on her location, then I had to take matters into my own hand. She probably told me not to call 911 because he had a weapon. And that made my heart drop as well because I didn't want him to use it on her at all. So what'd you do? I got up, banged on all her roommate's doors, knocked on all my roommate's doors, you know, crying, yelling, telling them that my girlfriend's gone and I have to go get her. A lot of them like, start asking questions that I can't answer at that time. So I told them I'd be heading to the police station. Whoever's getting in my car with me better hurry up. And you went, you went to the police station where? In Carrollton. Which is near where you live or near where she was? Uh, it's closer to about where we live, about a good five minute drive. I made it in two and my <laughs> lights were off. I'll bet. And meantime, Jayla, he's putting you at times into the trunk and taking the phone away, and you keep telling him that you need it to help him figure out how to get to Michigan where he was trying to go, right? Yes, ma'am. What did you, did you think he was going to kill you? Definitely, yeah. He told me at one point that it would have been easier if he would have just, uh, just gotten rid of my body because he was already digging himself into a deeper hole. This man has been arrested, right? You get, you, let's talk about the moment that you found her. 
What happened? Oh, she actually FaceTimed me while running down the street towards police officers. And it was uh, the best moment of the night. I knew she was safe and I knew she was gonna come back to me. And how did you know they were there and that you were safe? Um, I saw them before he was able to. So before he tried to make a run for it, um, I kind of already saw the police officers set up on how they cornered us. Mm -hmm. So Jayla's attorney is Rod Dixon, uh, and he's with us as well in our audience. Rod, thank you for being here. Thank you. What, this guy's facing 13 felony charges now? He is, and he's facing 25 to life. Actually, the rape charge in Georgia carries with it uh, the death penalty. I don't know whether the prosecutors are going to go for that, but we are certain he's going to be in jail for the rest of his life. Is this a career criminal type? He has been in and out of jail. As a matter of fact, about three months before he attacked Jayla, he was released from the Rutledge Correctional Facility in Columbus and moved to a home, a home complex, just a short half mile walk from the Kroger. So at some point he decided he wanted to go to Michigan. He went into his kitchen, got a kitchen knife and went into the Kroger and waited there. It was too easy. You know, it's too easy. It's what so many women worry about. When you go to the store late at night, you got to get a couple things from the grocery store. I mean, who hasn't done that? We've all done that. Uh, and there, I know that you guys are looking at a possible civil suit now because you were not safe uh, in, in that parking lot, in the Kroger parking lot. And Kroger has said that, uh, I just want to tell the audience that they, they say, they're deeply saddened by the terrible suffering that you've endured. These were heinous criminal acts. We extend our sympathy to Ms. Gladden and her family and her friends. We'll continue to assist law enforcement in any way we can to help bring this criminal to justice. They're referring all questions to authorities to protect the integrity of the investigation. Um, it's very brave of you to be out here. Thank you. Less than four months after your rape and sexual assault. I know you're doing it for one reason. Tell us what it is. To bring awareness. Um, I feel like this happens more often than we know and maybe women aren't brave enough or courageous enough to speak up and I'm okay with being that voice that people need to open up and let people know what's going on with them. Mm -hmm. And you, you were your own advocate. You maintained your mind, your thinking in a very stressful situation and that iPhone, that iPhone, Android doesn't matter, but you went for the text message, the little eye comes up, you press the eye, you share the location, okay? It's, it's as simple as right there. You don't have to text anything. It's just a matter of pressing with your thumb. Thank you for telling your story. Thank you. All the best to you both. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you too. Hello, Today fans. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking that button down there and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives.